All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about good coding practices, and we're going to talk about how to validate our HTML documents. Uh, I'm going to make mention of uh, commenting and also indentation and why that's helpful uh, for developers who come behind you uh, who, who, uh, who, who would inherit your work. So let's go ahead and skip to uh, the part here uh, where we're going to talk about some good coding practices here. So we're going to... All right. So W3C has put out a markup validation tool um, for every assignment in this class. You're going to validate every HTML document you submit. Um, and this is going to be the tool that we'll use. And so before you submit your projects in my class, make sure you validate your work and then fix all the errors that stem from uh, this tool. And this tool is going to help you with um, making sure that you don't have any um, incorrectly nested tags or you're missing the closing tag. It'll and it'll show you or you're missing the closing tag. Um, but it's going to really help you kind of basically clean up all the errors before you uh, submit your work. So let's go ahead and click on this link here. It's going to take you to uh, the validation service. So I'm going to right click and it's opening a new browser. And this is what the site looks like here. Uh, you have you can validate in three different ways. You have the three different tabs by the UR, URL. Uh, you can upload a file or you can just directly input uh, the code by copying and pasting it into uh, this text area here. This is the way that I prefer to validate my work is by cop copying my code and pasting it into this uh, this text box. It's, to me, it's just a little straightforward. I don't have to actually look through a folder structure and do, do any of that work. I can just copy and paste and hit check. So in our previous video, we've been working on um, uh, this website here, which is the absolute versus relative uh, file URL path worksheet. Um, so we've already conducted all the, gave this document structure. And now what we want to do is we want to run it through the validator to make sure that there's no errors in our document. So what I'm going to do is copy the code, I'm gonna right click, and I'm going to go back to my web page here. So I'll minimize this and I'll just paste it in. And I'll hit check. So here you, it'll show you a list of errors that you have um, and warnings um, once you've entered the, the, the check button. And so here the first warning is that I'm missing the lang attribute or language attribute uh, in my open and root tag. Um, and then I have another area here on uh, the number two here is, is saying that the href uh, does not have, is, it must not be empty. And so I need to give it a relative file path. And then here uh, for number three, it's saying bad value. Um, for, let's see here, the source attribute uh, that we have this uh, character within the file name. So these are easy fixes here. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and, and, and fix these uh, errors here. And then I'm going to revalidate my work. Um, and what I'm looking for is a green bar that says everything checks out. There's no document errors. And so let's go ahead and bring up our document here and fix some of these matters here. But before I fix them here, uh, the question is like, okay, I, if I receive a warning or I receive an error, I'm not sure how to fix it. I would say the best thing to do here is just Google it. And so if you right click and just right click and then say search um, Google for this, this warning. And so you just click on that. And you'll see that there's a lot of documentation online uh, that will show you or give you some information about the language attribute. And so if you click on this here, and here's kind of what W3C validation is kind of referring to, and that we need to add a language attribute. In this case, here we'll put EN, and you can probably read more about um, the language attribute within this web page. But if you don't understand how to fix a particular error or a warning, go ahead and Google it and do some research uh, and, and to see how you can actually resolve that that error or that warning. If you still can't figure it out, shoot me an email and then um, I'll I'll do my best to, to make sure that I, I assist you in getting you an answer to whatever error or warning uh, that came up when you validated your work. So what I'm gonna do is now go back here to my document and the one thing I need here in the root HTML tag is this lang attribute. And so that'll get rid of that warning. The next error that I have here 
is that I don't have a file path for my link tag. And so what I want to do is create a document and actually supply a, a relative file path for this uh, this external style sheet. So I'm going to go back to my document here and I'm going to create a file. And so this should be review here. And so I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to create a style sheet, external style sheet. Like I said, we haven't covered CSS yet, um, but we'll come back to this style.css document when we get to that, those videos. So that created this style.css document here. And like I said, we'll cover uh, CSS at a later time, um, but I'm gonna go back to my HTML document. And I'm gonna give the relative file path to style.css. And so here, what I'll do here is uh, the relative file path from this index.html document will be index.html. Why do I keep doing that? I'm missing the image, right? It will be, I'm sorry, it'll be CSS, right? Forward slash style.css. All right. And that's the relative file path to correctly reference or resource the style.css into this index.html page. All right. So that should fix that error. I'm going to press save, control S. It's the command shortcut. And the next error here has to do with the file name and the and, and that we can't necessarily use this character, so it's an illegal character. So what I'm going to do is rename my file and then uh, rename the file path here according to how I renamed the file. So go back up to my document. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click rename, and I'm going to get rid of these brackets. Now I'll just keep it as it worksheets logo png. And uh, I'll click off there, and then I'm going to do the same here, and I'll just rename it down here and get rid of those brackets. And I'll press save. So that's all the errors and all uh, the warnings um, that were, were, were given to me. Uh, I made amends, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this again, go back to my validation tool. I'm going to paste it into this text area and I'm going to revalidate, revalidate, revalidate. I'll click check. And this is what I'm looking for document checking complete, no errors or warnings to show. Now, let me just actually intentionally make an error here uh, in my document here. Let's say, for instance, that I forgot to close off the opening tag, um, the closing bracket for the opening tag for the OL here where my mouse is hovering, and I hit check. You'll see that it's going to give me a few errors. It gives me five errors. Um, sometimes when you go to validate your work, it's going to show like a hundred errors. That doesn't mean that your site uh, was terrible. It's just that one error kind of uh, triggered this chain reaction, um, and it's it's basically trying to make amends or it's trying to show you where the error uh, is is being caused at. And so sometimes when you fix, I would say start at the very top and fix the first error. And a lot of times when you fix one error, it'll um, It'll get rid of four or five other errors um, because that one error triggered um, a chain reaction. So here, if you scroll down, it'll show you, it'll highlight in your document where uh, it thinks that your error is, uh, is occurring. And in this case here, it's in on line 33. Uh, it starts to highlight uh, the HTML code in my document. So uh, in this case here, like I said, just to fix that, I would just have to put the closing bracket. But feel free to use... Uh, this view down here, the source code view, uh, to see where the error may may be potentially triggering. All right. And so now, if I just fix that error and I click check, all right, everything checks out. There's no yellow highlighting uh, within this document. Last but not least, here, uh, let me just say a few words about um, good coding practices here. So let me bring up my editor. Um, and one of the things you've seen me do as I've coded out this HTML document is that I've I've indented my code, all right? And so if you look in the head here, uh, the children of head will be title, meta, the, these meta tags, style, and link. And then if you look at the body here, we have the child, the, the immediate child will be header, paragraph, IMG, HR, OL, and footer. But then here in header, the header has some children, which is H1, H1, and then H2. And typically, we're going to tab over, press the tab key to show that it's a child of that particular tag. And that's just a good coding practice. Now, that's not a standard that W3C enforces. 
W3C doesn't care about the indentation of your code, but it's more of a good coding practice. The other thing that's a good coding practice is the commenting uh, within your HTML document. And this is helpful for people who may come behind you. Um, it, it's good for document and in, in file documentation uh, to kind of describe what you're doing or uh, to kind of give some reference to um, some of the work that you've already coded out in your document. And so these are good coding practices that uh, help out not just only yourself, but other developers who may be working on the web project. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, and like I said, do your best to implement good coding practices. It's one of the things that I assess on all of your assignments. I make sure that the code is validated and all the errors are fixed. And I also check to see if you're indenting your code um, because it helps with not only uh, helps you as a developer, but it helps people who come behind you. And like I said, the benefit of that is that here's the open body tag. And then I can just basically scroll all the way down and see the close body tag. All right, I'm just going to wrap this video up and we're going to move on to CSS.